Hi, I'm Jeremy Cook, and today I'm going to be talking about my Infinity Mirror. You can see the results of the build, and the picture is seen right here. Follow along and see how I made this, this uh, excellent Infinity Mirror. So the first thing I had to do was measure the furring strips that I got from uh, from Home Depot a while ago. Really, most of the stuff that I had was just waste from other projects, which was which was really great. You can see me here measuring it, and then I adjusted my router table so that I could uh, I could cut some slots in it, a 16th of an inch uh, wide. That way, the the mirrors that I had would fit on them. The mirrors that I'm using are double-sided mirrors, so that you know, in theory, you know, lights bouncing back and forth. You know either way so even though you couldn't see in one way you could only see it I don't know it's kind of hard to explain the, the mirrors kind of uh, they look mirrored on both sides but really you can see through on one side but when they're they're stacked up against each other what happens is that you can see inside if, if there's light in inside it kind of like you could see it on the outside so so but the other thing is it bounces off the mirror in the back so you got these two lights bouncing back and forth so when you see in there it looks like the mirrors like reflect towards infinity um you know i think there was a movie with uh bruce lee a long time ago where this guy you know the bad guy i think it was mr hand he uh had like his dungeon and he tricked he tricked him because he, he tricked him because he had these mirrors and, and like uh, bruce lee couldn't understand where he was and i think he slapped him with his it was his metal hand and it was uh it was great. I mean, just one of the best movies really ever. I mean, even if you don't like kung fu movies, which I don't, that was just a great movie. But as it stands, right here, I've just measured measured the device. Um, you know, I cut the bottom. You know, cutting the throwing strips of length. Did three three copies of it just so I could have um, space for the Arduino processor to go in. Um, this Arduino was used so that it can actually uh, bounce a light around. It powers the light. You know, initially I thought maybe I could use some bare LEDs. Um, that didn't really work out too well because they just weren't bright enough. Um, you can see me here. I'm cutting some space for Arduino, kind of making a little cavity inside. Um, I didn't realize until later, but I have a bandsaw. I should have probably just used that. But, you know, I've got a new router, so, you know, why not use that? And that's that's what I did. It worked out okay. Um, right here I'm measuring, you know, look measuring it. To see where I could put the holes for the LEDs. Now, you know, again, I didn't use these LEDs, but I did end up using the holes some. So, doing some measurement here, and now I'm drilling it with my uh, milling milling machine, you know, slash drill drill press. I mean, I pretty much use it as a drill press. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nice to have the milling machine capabilities, though. So as you can see here, I've got one of the LEDs. I, uh, you know, it's okay. It's normal LED. Looks kind of bright, but really, it's just not bright enough. Um, here I am trying to solder six of them together to, you know, put them in there. I, I was planning on using a um, a clear piece of acrylic or plexiglass on the inside, and then like marking it so that when you shine the light in it, it'll um, it'll shine in the inside. And you know, if it was dark, you could see that. But if it's light. And the fact that the uh, the mirrors need a fair amount of light to actually be able to be seen just wasn't working out right. Um, on the bottom here, you can see me cutting the bottom support. I made that out of some other material I had that was a little thinner. Thought I'd use that to make it you know look a little bit better. Um, and there there it is. It's actually some hollow material with like foam on the inside. Super cheap and super light. I thought about using it for a quadcopter frame or something. Anyway, after I. Um, you can see there I used the NeoPixels instead of just traditional LEDs. That was, uh, those are much brighter, which is good. And right here you can see I'm cutting a slot in it for the NeoPixels. It fits, uh, fits very nicely inside. Hooked it up, it's, uh, brightly shining, as LEDs do. And here I am trying it out, I'm putting, putting the thing together. Um, you know, kind of like I... You know, you can see the light kind of shining, kind of the, 
the basis of this whole uh, reflective infinity mirror. You can see the acrylic on the inside. I was still kind of stuck on that idea. But you can see here, it's uh, blinking, you know, forming an infinite pattern, you know, supposedly infinite. Looks, uh, looks pretty cool. So right here, I'm at glue the top, uh, putting it on. Yep, that's what I did. Uh, drilled the top. Actually put some nails in it just so I could secure it. And even in retrospect, I probably didn't even need the glue. Maybe I should have used two, two nails, but you know, whatever. That nail looked okay, so it's time to put another nail in. Obviously, I gotta use a pilot drill because otherwise, I might split the wood, and, and you never, you don't want that. So at this point, it was time to to glue up the bottom the bottom pieces. I didn't use any nails in it because uh, you know that glue is supposed to be stronger than like plywood, right? So you know, what's the point of using nails, especially for something that isn't exactly load bearing? For that matter, I guess I could have used a glue on the top too, but, you know. So, there it is going together. I clamped it with these uh, nice new clamps from, uh, I guess I got them from Harbor Freight. So that was, that was pretty cool, got to use those. And then I just let it sit for a while, and then, uh, then took it off, and it was uh, assembled as it should be. So, so the other question was how to attach the top to it. Um, what I decided to do was actually use some neodymium magnets that I had um, from another project. So what I did was I, I nailed, put some nails in here. Uh, I think they were like roofing nails, like fairly small nails, but they were they had a fairly they have a fairly wide head on them. So what I did was I put those in and then marked it with a paint pen. You can see me marking it right there. And then from there, what I did I used it as a template. Put the top on there and uh, made a mark. You can see the mark just in a second. See, there it is. From there, I measured the how um, how tall the, the magnets were, and then I, I milled a uh, a hole for each of them. After this, I glued it in there with uh, super glue, and once it's, it had set for a while, put it on the top, and it, it held uh, extremely nicely. I, I totally recommend these type of magnets. I mean, they're really great and like for a solution because I, I thought you know I could use a hinge, and you know that would have worked fine. But yeah, why not use magnets? Magnets are awesome, and it worked. You know, th that being removable means that I could take the top off to either change change the glass or you know work on the electronics below without you know without much trouble whatsoever. So, uh, you know, I decided to, to stain, stain and use a stain slash urethane combo thing. Um, you know, because who wants to use two steps when you can just use one? I mean, as it so happens, I ended up sanding it in between after putting ureth, ure, what do you call it? Ure stain on it. And, um, you know, there I am sanding it. So I sanded it. And then I put some more urethane on it again because, uh, you know, actually taking some pride in my work these days. You know, before, you know, long ago, I, I would just kind of slap something together with duct tape and call it a day. But, you know, now I've got a little more time to, to work on my projects. I can make them actually presentable. So maybe, maybe I'll have this on this place somewhere to make it fair or something. Um, do a little, little more sanding. You can see I'm using it on a, uh, a suction box that I made in another video. I, I'll put it up there in the links or cards or whatever it is, so you can check it out if you want. It's been a, a pretty good tool. So yeah, here I am staining it again. And after two coats and some sanding, looks uh, looks pretty good. So now it's time to insert the uh, electronics in there, the, the NeoPixel. Uh, I guess it's NeoPixel, whatever, programmable RGB strips. Might be from another vendor. I don't know. It uses uh, two wires, but or four wires. You can include the power and ground. So I stuck it in there with super glue. 
let it sit for a while, I actually um, use these little wrenches for my, my router on it to, uh, you know, make it stay. It actually fell off when I put the glass in, you can, you can see, or the, the acrylic. Um, but that's easily, easy enough corrected, especially when you put both in there. And then I put the top on, so looks uh, looks pretty good at this point. Only thing left to do is hook up the Arduino to to make the uh, RGB strip light up like it should. Once that was done, I hooked it up to a DC power supply, and you know, I had a uh, functional infinity mirror. I really, I was really proud of how this turned out. It's actually a pretty cool project. You can see a lot of the. Um, See the results in just one second. Um, showing out the top, a little front view, and then with the lights off, it looks looks even better. Just a random pattern. I guess I could, uh, you know, change the pattern if I wanted to. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching the video. You know, if you uh, if you liked it, please, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to me, or uh, even follow me on Twitter at Jeremy S. Cook. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.